And joining us in this broadcast is uh, Rakesh Maria, former top cop of Mumbai, who also cracked the Bombay serial blast case. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, sir, this afternoon here on Mirror Now. Uh, first up, uh, you know, I want to ask you a question on the fact that all the seven who have been convicted by the Tata court today have actually been acquitted of the charge of waging war against the nation. So how do you react to what really happened as far as their acquittal in this particular charge is concerned? See, I, you know, I I will not be in a position to speak on that because I have not read the judgment. <clears throat> in fact, I've just come back into the city and I was mm -hmm. told about uh, this. But, you know, uh, the, the uh, I must compliment the CBI okay. and the Mumbai police for the investigation because uh, they have been able, you know, this group, this group of seven which was there was basically part of the conspiracy. You know, the earlier, uh, you know, the earlier group, you know, 125 people were charge sheeted in the uh, earlier charge sheet out of which 100 got convicted. Now, there, apart from Yakub Memon, who was one of the main conspirators, the planners and the financers, the rest of the people were, uh, you know, the landing agents, the, the, the foot soldiers, the one who, who, who uh, uh, you know, uh, escorted and helped in the landing of the uh, arms, ammunition, explosives, who uh, uh, transported it uh, into the city, who went and wrecked the various locations, filled the vehicles with explosives, and on 12th March, uh, drove and dropped the vehicles <coughs> to the various locations, uh, the 12 locations where the blast took place. The, you know, th that was the earlier group. But this group was the one which took part in the main conspiracy meetings in Dubai, where it was decided to do something in India, Mumbai, where it was planned how to go about doing it, you know, recruit uh, youngsters, send them out for training, um, you know, see that the arms, ammunition, explosives are smuggled into the country, uh, stored at safe locations, and then on the day of the blast, uh, uh, use so the, you know this group was the group which was part of that conspiracy they were also uh, the financers the the money uh, the financing part they did so that way it is very very important because the court you know the the conspiracy theory the the right. the investigation the investigating team you know the, the, which which did the conspiracy that it stood judicial scrutiny so it you know this conspiracy which was hatched abroad but you know three fourth of it was hatched abroad the rest of the meetings took place here. That has been proved in the court today. Uh, Mr. Maria, good evening. This is uh, Smita Nair from Mumbai. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Maria, as, as journalists, we have often heard you recount how you chanced upon, uh, you know, it was it was almost like a chancing upon how the case uh, uh, sort of came uh, came together when you saw that abandoned scooter, the search of the Memon's residence where you found the key to that abandoned scooter. For the benefit of our viewers, perhaps who aren't as familiar with how these investigations into the 93 blast unravel, could you recount for us those initial days of investigations after the blast? You see, you know, uh, uh, if you recollect on 12th March when 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 uh, when the blast occurred, you know, uh, the the main uh, task before Mumbai police at that time was to ensure that the city does not go back to uh, December and January 92, 93. So that was the main task then. Now, when this in, when the blast occurred, you know, the special team was formed and, uh, you know, the then commissioner, Mr. Samra, and the joint commissioner, Mr. M.N. Singh, they constituted a team and I was asked to uh, head that team to investigate. So I got a good group of uh, uh, investigators and, you know, that uh, on Naigao Crossroad, you know, Dadar, the uh, abandoned scooter, which was there, uh, where, uh, you know, the bomb BDS team came, uh, they found, uh, you know, we had, the, we, we didn't even know what was uh, RDX at that time and the BDS team came and said that this is RDX and then that scooter was towed away and taken to Matunga police station as part of evidence in that case and then subsequently you know uh, 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 those that abandoned uh, uh, MFC 1972 the, the the Maruti van which was found abandoned at Siemens uh, at Burley right. and uh, you know when we went back uh, we found that that vehicle belonged to one of the Memon wives and uh, we went, I think it was Rubina, it went, we went to uh, uh, the house and under Panchnama, the Memon house uh, was opened at Mahim. 
and uh, that al husseini building and from there the whole uh, you know asghar ali mukadam one of the accused who got convicted in that case who was manager of tiger mem and he was brought in that night his interrogation then the whole thing fell into place but it, you know today's as i mentioned earlier today's in the, you know conviction is very very important because these were the main planners and financiers these are the people who along with daud abraham and the isa sat in uh, Dubai and planned out the whole thing. How uh, boys have to be bought for training. How the explosives, uh, armed ammunition have to be smuggled into the country. Right. How you know money part everything. So you know this this conviction. You know I must compliment the CBI that they 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 were able to prove the conspiracy and the role of these people. Even though the whole their act, the conspiracy and other thing was held abroad. Mr. Maria, uh, in the wake of this uh, verdict today, we have. Uh, hearing from average Mumbaiers, uh, indeed, some of the families of survivors as well, who lament the time taken uh, for justice to be delivered. 24 long years. We are, of course, looking uh, at part two of the Bombay blast case trial. Uh, these seven men having been apprehended only at the end of part one of the 93 blast case trial. Uh, but perhaps what is not appreciated enough is the fact that India was facing for for the very first time this kind of coordinated attack we hadn't seen. Uh, also rare world over. This kind of multiple 12 blasts in 12 places in a span of uh, uh, just over two hours uh, and the fact that it, uh, you know, more than 250 people were killed. So in, in that sense, you would say that it took some time for, for, for the police, uh, for the administration to come to grips with what we were faced with. You know, you must keep one thing in mind. What, you know, in, uh, in this case, uh, you know, when it, when it occurred, you know, in 93, 12th March 1993, you know, Mumbai police computers were just making their way into Mumbai police. I remember once the whole, you know, the, we were putting together the chart sheet. At that time, uh, you know, four computers were given to us for putting up the chart sheet, uh, you know, getting the typing done and getting the whole uh, chart sheet prepared. Four computers were given to us. There were no mobile phones during that uh, time. Our teams which were going out to arrest, you know, all over the country, the teams went to arrest various uh, accused. So there were no mobile phones at uh, that time. So when the teams were going, they had to come, go to a nearest PCO, get in touch with us and receive instructions or inform us as to what is the progress. And the whole secrecy had to be maintained because if you if, if it was leaked out, so-and-so was arrested, the entire chain would be uh, broken. So, you know, these were the constraints under which the team worked during that uh, time. Yes, it, the, 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 you know, justice has been slow, but then, you know, we, it, it is the judicial process, the entire judicial process. Nobody can say that, you know, uh, without proper judicial scrutiny, conviction uh, was done. You know, opportunity was given to everybody. The best of lawyers appeared for the uh, defense. And, you know, everybody got, to, yes, it takes time, but, you know, nobody can point a finger. You know, our, you know, 12th March, this blast took place. 14th March, you know, within 48 hours, despite the constraints and other things, we were able to detect this uh, case within 48 uh, hours. So, you know, yes, uh, you know, one feels that justice should be speedy. Uh, it should, uh, the, you know, it should end. But then, you know, equal opportunity to be given to the defense to put forth its case, the prosecution to prove its uh, uh, case. I think, uh, you know, one should accept, uh, you know, the long uh, time it has taken for the right. justice to be done. Uh, Mr. Maria, one never got the opportunity to ask you what you made of uh, the surrounding Yaqub Memin's ham hanging, the last-minute uh, deliberations in a court where, uh, you know, there was a midnight hearing in the Supreme Court uh, leading, of course, uh, to the upholding of that death sentence and the eventual execution of Yaqub Memin on the 30th of July 2015. Uh, as an officer who was involved in the probe, you closely, uh, you know, saw the many terror strikes that happened in the city of Mumbai. How did you view the row surrounding Yaqub Mem Memin getting yet another opportunity in that sense to knock on the doors of the highest court in the land uh, to seeking clemency. No, you know, you know, one would feel sorry, one would feel bad if an innocent person was hung. He was very much involved in the uh, conspiracy. He was very much involved in arranging for tickets 
but you know giving motivational talks to all the youngsters who went from here to pakistan via dubai you know he 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 was very much part of uh, it and you know b- 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 like the people who got convicted uh, today this was you know this was the head the the, the foot soldiers the youngsters you know who were uh, you know butchers who were who were uh, barbers or uh, daily wage earners who who were the foot soldiers they acted on the instructions on the orders of the head and these are the people who were at, who, who you know this is the this is the head and i you know he was definitely involved and uh, you know what about so many people who died you know sub you had uh, 657 713 people who got injured 257 who died what about justice to them right and you know it's it's you know, but i think the loss at that time in 90 93 i think it was estimated anywhere between 27 crores to 30 crores which may today appear to be a very small figure but no it was and you know they hit hit at the, you know this was the financial capital the stock market the air india building the five star uh, hotel the whole plan was uh, to destroy the financial capital of this uh, country so uh, you know one should think of that uh, also no innocent man has been uh, convicted in this case no innocent person yakub memon was not innocent so is hanging up one should not feel any any one bit sorry about it Right, Mr. Mari, I was speaking to your former c- colleague from the force, Mr. D. Sevanandan, this afternoon uh, after the verdict came through, and he said he understands the lament that will always be that Dawood Ibrahim got away, the masterminds like Mohammad Dosa, uh, Tiger Memon got away, uh, and and that he would have liked to see them uh, brought to book. Is that a sentiment that you echo? There, of course, have been several conspiracy theories about whether there was any sort of inside involvement in getting Dawood to flee the country, etc. No, but you know, I, I see, Dawood left this country in eighty six, eighty seven. uh but tiger memon yeah, left uh, after planning out this whole thing after you know at alusaini building that night after filling all the explosives after speaking giving instructions motivational talks to his uh, associates he left by the emirates flight at 5 o'clock in the morning of 12th uh, march so before the offense occurred these people you know tiger had left his family had left earlier tiger left on that morning daud was already gone earlier so so So, you know if they were in this country i can assure you we would have spared no effort to ensure and probably today they also would have been convicted and you know got the sentence that they deserved and you know yes the feeling is there that these these main people are uh, still out but the fact that the conspiracy has been proved it you know it is a matter of great satisfaction and you know even in future whenever daud is brought back and tiger memon are brought back this the the trial of these accused you know it will it will it, it, it will show their involvement and it will it will uh, it will help the prosecution in future Right Mr Maria what what is your big takeaway from the 93 uh, blast trial of course uh, in in the interim uh, we have had several terrorist strikes in the city of Mumbai we've got the horrific train blast that happened and of course uh, the most uh, sort of spectacular uh, in in a, uh, of of terror attacks uh, that one saw in Mumbai in 2008 uh, you've you've obviously seen the you've been part of that probe uh, in close quarters as well uh, what is your take away today uh, from how what the Mumbai police or the force has learned uh, from investigations uh, into these subsequent terror strikes since 1993 so you know that see 93 probably was the first big serial blast anywhere in the world and uh, in mumbai it was the precursor to the you know to the other uh, uh, blast which uh, occurred uh, you know this was the, uh, uh, the the time the first time when the isi uh, took the help of uh, the mumbai underworld the daud ibrahim uh, group to engineer this uh, and you know this was from from the 93 blast onwards you know the the isi plan that this city you know the financial capital should be attacked and the financial capital uh, if you if you if you uh, you know uh, organize blasts and uh, uh, destroy the financial capital it will impact the country so mumbai that way is, uh, is has always been a target will always be uh, a 
target so that way it is uh, you know uh, uh, it, it was the first big uh, uh, case and the rest uh, you know you know mumbai will always continue to be a target Uh, of terrorists you know not only mumbai any big city today no country state or nation can say that it is free from the threat of terrorist uh, strike If, you know one cannot be complacent even with the arrest of these people the conviction of these people one has to always be alert and uh, a good network system is uh, is very very uh, important today eternal vigilance is the price one pays yes. for democracy as it said mr rakesh maria appreciate you taking time to speak to us on a day uh, an important important judgment has come from the tata court here in mumbai part 2 of the 1993 bombay blast case resulting in the conviction of six of the seven accused the quantum of sentence will be pronounced on monday after arguments and uh, 